Tell me about the festival stage. Yeah. We all know the festival stage. We think it's fabulous. But you've worked on it a lot. Now, you talked about the screen, right? And I need, I need to see that when I see mm -hmm. Chicago. I'm seeing a bit of that. But there you are. In a, yeah. So how do you put those two things together? Well, so how, Okay, here you are directing on the Avon or directing on a proscenium. Mm -hmm. Here you are directing on the festival. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Enlighten totally me. Different. Enlighten me. In totally different apples and oranges. So... Um, <clears throat> I started on that stage as a performer. So I've been in every capacity on that stage. And I've assisted, I've associated, I've been directed at choreography. So I've had all of those elements. And I've had time. I've had the privilege of time on that stage. So that stage is a, is a, um, it's a communal space. So the difference of that space, so if you're sitting in a proscenium, I may see this audience beside me. I may see the back of people's heads. But that's my relationship with other audience members. The difference in that space is you are very much, I am, you and I, I can see exactly what you think of this show. And you're right there across from me. So you're actually part of the show. So that other audience, so it can get things going like no other theater can. It, it is the most rewarding feeling when that audience together communally enjoys a show or feels you know emotions together that's the difference of a, a thrust stage say and the proscenium now to work on that stage um, there's often been you know so many directors that have come before me they all have their own science of how this works and there's rules of the stage I don't like to think there's rules but there definitely are parameters that you have to look at um, I has anybody ever written those down um, Michael Langham's version of the stage. Yeah, well, you stage? know, I, I, you know, I think Michael Langham. I mean, honestly, the way he, I learned more from Michael Langham probably than anybody of moving people on that stage, because he it was a master class every time watching him move twenty five people. It was he just understood the space. Here's the thing: there is a science to. There's a physics. There's these are the aisles. This is what happens when we put people here. An audience I have, I call it the seven second rule. And that is an audience will tolerate you in their eye line for seven seconds. And then they're going to start doing this, this, and they're going to be mad. And your, you know, button, your, their face is less good for them. So it's a seven second rule of how long, for me, you, you can be somewhere. Um, and there's a, a way to be on that stage that it, it actually is very organic. To me, it's the most freeing space once you understand how it, how it works, you know? Um, freeing done, for the director, freeing for the performance? I think it's both. Right. I think at first it's a nightmare. It's really hard to understand. And then once you're there, you, you feel the space. Look, that space is built for soliloquy. That's what that space is built for. So when you decide to, you know, put a 25, 30 people production number out there, it's fantastic, you know, because in three seconds I can go from that to that. Right. It's built for that. The furthest seat, and I'm going to say in feet, but the furthest seat from the center of that stage is 60 feet to the back of the house. That's the furthest seat. So that's kind of crazy. That's really close. The other thing about that stage with a musical is there is no pit. So the orchestra lives upstairs in this beautiful loft that's very high tech, but we don't see them. Now, the advantage of that, uh, it's always hard to not see the musicians. I do love that part of the element of a, of a musical, so it's hard not to not see them. But the advantage of that is it's you, action, audience. On a proscenium, often you have an orchestra pit right. between the audience and the actor. Now, in a comedy, that's, that's a lot of distance, you know? Right, right, um, right. So, you know, I, and sometimes we build up over top of orchestra pits. And in terms of the music, the performers never see the conductor. Yes, they see Is the, the conductor on a video? Camera. Yes, three, there is. three different videos. And yes. where are they? They are up center aisle. Right. And then two in the VOMs. Okay. Right. So, the thing about that space is I work, I've done a lot of film, and I brought all of those skills to that stage. And I've done a lot of opera. Again, I bring all of that to that stage because I can use all of it. Um, I look at it, Richard Manette used to kind of 
look at things as as three master shots. And I, it is sort of, you know, if you look at the front as a master shot, right. that's one shot. Then I'm going to go over here and do this shot, and over here and do this shot. The thing is, that's true, but somehow you've got to get, blur the lines. You can't, you, you still have to keep it moving, right. you know, and, and, and flowing. There is no real upstage, you know. There's no real upstage unless you're way up there, because these people on the sides... You know, when I did a chorus line on that stage, and I was allowed to reimagine the whole thing, I chose to put the line, instead of it being downstage, the, the, the line that the dancers are right, on, right. I put it upstage. And it, we put an LED in so the line could disappear. Right. We didn't want it to be there, so the, the, you know, the fantasy world and the real world. But one of the things I wanted to do was give people an experience in aisle nine and one, which is extremes. And I tend to do something sort of special for all of these side seats that you would never get to see from the front. Um, How do you keep all this in your head? Well, I mean, there you got all the I, audience out there, and then you're thinking about these people. Yeah, those. but because I sit, and I, when, I'm, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm directing and... and you know, the and, question is, how does Donna Fiore carry all of this well, that's different. inside? That's different. I mean, I basically, the, the thing that I want, though, is <clears> what I wanted them to see, those people in 9 and 1, was when those dancers are standing there and often their hands are, you know, they're waiting on the line. And the reality is, yes, this is what we see, but what's going on behind their back is torture. Right. And and I remember people some that were sitting in nine and one going, God, that was really unnerving to see. So I, let, I just let the actors do what they would do, thinking they were upstage. But of course, in that space, they're not.